Welcome to the For the Makers podcast. I'm so glad you all are here on this beautiful day. Uh, my name is Leah Beth Etheridge, and I'm one of your co-hosts, and I'm joined here also with my co-host, Rachel Gifford. What's up, my girl? How hey. you doing? <laughs> Good. Good. Dude, you wrote a bop for that <laughs> for that opening Jonathan and I were both like <laughs> bopping over here it's so good oh, um so glad. we are so glad all of you he- are here gentle listeners as our good friend Rachel Lynn likes <laughs> yeah. to say um Thank you for being here. Uh, hopefully this podcast inspires you to tell your own stories, to um, create art. Um, that's why we're here um, as fellow artists for artists. So um, just a reminder that we do release our podcast every second and fourth week of the Friday. <laughs> Friday of the second and fourth week of the month. So, because you clap on the two and the four, not on the one and the three. Right, Rach? That's right. <laughs> We're literally like drilling that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so, you guys, today we have a really awesome guest. Um, our very good friend, Mr. Jonathan Hogue. Um, he is an inspiration to both Rach and I, and um, we're really excited to have him here. Um, Rach, you have Jonathan's bio for us? Yeah, I'm going to do a cold reading of uh, Jonathan Hogue's bio right now. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, he's a writer and producer uh, for theater and hoping to branch out into uh, TV and film at some at some point. So Jonathan Hogue is a theatrical producer, writer, and director with a passion for new work development and creative branding. He carries four plus years of experience in executive administrative marketing and production assistant positions on Broadway, as well as with Williamstown Theater Festival, the Joffrey Ballet School, Bartle Bogle Hegarty, and Production Glue, and is currently completing his MFA in theater management and producing at Columbia University. Big deal. Super cool. He is also the writer the, for the book and score and lead producer of Stranger Sings, the parody musical, the winner of the 2021 Broadway World Off-Broadway Award for Best New Musical. Amazing. Now playing a hit extended run off-Broadway with international productions running concurrently in the UK and Australia. Jonathan, this is just amazing. So cool. Other projects in development include Camp Nightmare, a jukebox parody musical riffing on 1980s slasher films. I want to talk about that. That sounds awesome. Sounds so cool. And The Nations, a drama loosely based on his experiences as an aid worker across three continents, which received its virtual world premiere in in spring of 2021. He has also produced the New York premiere of Jay Stoll's The Singularity Play, as well as a series of virtual one acts for Theatrical Resources Unlimited's 2021 True Speak Benefit, and has served as a reader for the True Voices in Williamstown Theater Festival Weisberger New Play Awards. That is Dude. an amazing bio. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. My gosh, that's just like so full of so many amazing, amazing things. Um, can you talk a little bit about Stranger Things really quickly? Because I want to make sure that we like fully, uh, fully get to that because that started, um, you, ha- you did an off-Broadway run and that's where the award, the Broadway World Award came in. And then you've moved now to a new theater and it's international. So how can people, uh, get on board with this how can people be seeing it and everything yeah well so it's uh you know we we started uh I've been working on the show since 2017 yeah um I I didn't really know it was going to take off like this I always knew it's Stranger Things so it's you know the biggest tv show in the world pretty much (laughs) and so obviously there's an audience for it but you know I uh yeah we did we did this um this run uh in the West Village in summer 2021 it was a uh, uh, like a self-produced like residency that we got right. at this theater for five weeks, um, and uh, and it was great. You know, we thought that was kind of our our off Broadway debut. We were done, like right. you know, we had done all of this. We did our cast album. Um, the Broadway World Awards happened, and the fans voted us best new musical of the season, which I was crazy that. for you know off Broadway. 
And um, and then from there, it was you know we were getting these these uh, DMs on Instagram and emails from these different theaters around the world that were saying, hey, we saw you won these Broadway World Awards. We have a theater here that would love to do this show, you know, or we're producers and we'd love to do this show. We know there's an audience, you know, can we? figure this out. And right. so we um, spent a couple of months just like going back and forth and kind of trying to figure out, you know, are these theaters the right theaters for this show? Um, are they the right producers for the show? You know, do they have a sense for what audience, you know, like the, the audience that they have that could be great for this. And so, um, so yeah, so we, we got these, these productions going in Australia and, uh, and then Lon in London and then, you know, we were like, okay, I, I think we want to bring this back to New York because it obviously had such a huge, huge following. And we also right. felt like, there was so much more we wanted to do with the show that yeah. when we were just self-producing, it was like we had no money. I mean, I was like running the bar, you know, yeah. <laughs> like yes. yes. there's there literally like, so, yeah, there was just so much we could have done if we had more money and had bigger team and everything. And so we, we, you know, started building a, this team, uh, my, my director and producing partner, Nick Flato and I, we were just, you know, knocking on doors and meeting with other producers to help us, you know, kind of come on board and raise this money with us. And yeah. so our production now has been running at Playhouse 46, uh, since September, yeah, um, we were supposed to run through January 1st, and then we had such great audience response that we extended through March 5th, and then once again, we extended through April 30th, and then by the time this airs, it might be even longer. Might I don't know, so. <laughs> I hope it's even longer. I do, too. I mean, it's, 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 I will say it's really remarkable the way that, that theater works, especially off-Broadway, because it's just such a, it's such a small market, and it's, right. it's so hard to compete with Broadway that you're, you know, you could have the, the biggest Stranger Things fan in the world coming in to see a show uh, in New York, and they'll go see, you know, uh, Anne Juliet instead right. of going to see Stranger Things, Stranger Things, because they, it's a Broadway show, and right. it's, you know, and and the brand of Broadway is so hard to compete with. But what we're finding now is that you know, word of mouth, when people really understand what our show is, people are coming to see Stranger Things and then going to see Broadway shows. You know, there's yeah. we're, we're now starting to get that traction of the right audience that really loves the show is telling all their friends coming in from the city. I mean, people have seen it like three, four times at this point. Wow. Someone's seen it 12 times at this oh point. I mean, it's gosh. just like insane. It's That's insane. That's so cool. And, and the fun thing about it too is that it's in the round. We're the yeah. only uh, off-Broadway theater that's fully in the round kind of permanently as a setup. And wow. it, it really gives us this incredible uh, immersive experience for our audiences. You know, you walk into our theater um, – and it's this 80s basement, you right. know, we've got these kind of like wood panel walls and tchotchkes and like right. cool like 80s memorabilia. There's beanbags you can sit on if you're That's in the, so the cool. premium seats, you know, yeah. and it's just yeah. like people love it. It's it's so you yeah. walk. It's like the show is fun, but then you're also like part of it and the cast yeah. is interacting with you and it's it's right. goofy and silly and weird things happen every night that you don't expect and right you know yeah so people love coming back multiple times because it's just you can sit in a different section and it's a new experience right. and so it's it's really magical I'm like so I'm so proud of it I'm so proud of the cast and, and the team that's built it I'm, I'm proud of the you know the London production I got to fly out and Kind of work with that a little bit back in October, and it's a very different production. You know, yeah, they're kind of sure. proscenium style, and and they have just different actors in it. So it's yeah. like different, you know, comedic ideas and 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 rhythms and voices, and right. and it's and it still works. It's still funny. Audiences love it, and Australia the same. It's like, it, it's just it's it's really cool. I mean, I that was I think that was scary because I I. I've always been involved, like heavily involved in the creation of it. So to yeah. hand the script to someone right. and say, Here you, you guys go. put it up right. yeah. and yeah. not really sure if it's going to work or not. You know, it was, it was like, I don't know, like yeah. maybe it only works if we have these specific actors and you know, it, it, it worked. It yeah. really worked. And now they're, they're, um, they're actually, uh, they just finished their run in London and then they're taking it out on a UK tour this fall. So that's, that's actually, so great. that's our, our that's new, huge news there so that's that's really exciting so that's and then so cool. oh many gosh. more many more territories to come as well we're getting yeah. i mean we got an email from someone in brazil yesterday oh or a couple gosh. days ago that it was like sure what? great let's do it you know so it's, that's crazy. it's oh. insane it's insane i yeah we're so excited for you <laughs> truly i remember seeing it um at the west fourth production downtown before you guys moved up to the theater you're in now and i just loved it it was so it's parody is so um interesting to me as an entity because you know the story so like usually like there's a friend's musical parody there's an office musical parody there's you know all these other things but it's like you you fall in love with the story people who are fans of stranger things um 
will just eat it up because there are all these little idiosyncrasies. Is that the way you say it? Idiosyncrasies that um, are specific to the show that if you're a fan, you will like, you'll be like, oh my gosh, that's so funny because you know more about the show than somebody who doesn't. But I remember Rachel went to go see it and you hadn't seen Stranger Things. I haven't seen it yet. But you loved it too. I was laughing. And I mean, I knew, I know, like I knew the premise of the show, Um, but I was like floored. I was just laughing my socks off the entire time. It was just, yeah, I don't think you, I don't think you have to know the show to, to get it or to like think that it's funny. Well, that's, that's my favorite compliment when I hear from audiences. I mean, it's like every, every time I go, people are like, I've never seen stranger things and I'm going to watch it, you know? (laughs) And it's It's like, yeah, opposite now. Well, and it's, it's, it's such an easy show to parody because it's, it's built off of the the TV show like innately is built off of this nostalgia for eighties, eighties, you know, movies and TV shows and icons. And so it's, I mean, it's a simple story. It's, you know, and, and the, the, the musical, the parody is, is just taking kind of the arc of season one and it's just very easy to follow. So it's like, there's like all those little in jokes for the fans, which I like, I, I live for like the joke that gets (laughs) one person that's cackling and no one else, you know, like, and and, you know, and it's fun watching it every, every, you know, whenever I see it, because there's like, you can tell there's different types of audiences that come to see it. Totally. Like some nights everyone gets the theater jokes and no one gets the in jokes and stranger things. And sometimes it's the complete opposite. <laughs> opposite yeah, yeah. And I love that. It's like, there's always something for everyone. And yeah. like the feeling of like getting a joke that no one else got is like totally. the, the most special experience. Totally. When, like for you personally. So it's like those little yeah. like quick jokes. That's like, wait, did I just hear that? Right. It, yeah. Right. I love that stuff. So I like pepper all those little things in there just for like, you know, you have the big jokes that everyone laughs at and then you have those little things that it's yeah. like two people get it and they just love it. So yeah. it's, it's fun. You so guys, if you're in town, if you're in New York yeah. and, um, you have some time and some cash monies, go see, go see Stranger Things because so it fun. is such a freaking blast. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. Um, so do you, what do you say? Do you guys want to jump into these uh, yeah. questions? Really I quick? realized too, can we take a step back and also Jonathan, can you just explain how, you know, LB and, and me. Oh yeah. We didn't do that. Didn't <laughs> we, we didn't do that. I was like stranger thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's, I'm like trying to remember the first time I would have met you, but like it's, I know. we, we started out as part of the hang, which yeah. was this, you know, Christian artist group. And, um, it was just, I, I think I came in in like the first year of it probably yeah, is when probably, I met you guys. Yeah, but, like, like the um, OG crowd. Really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was just really special. I was like, you know, I was like trying to find a, a space um, to, to connect my faith with like the arts. Cause it yeah. just feels like there's such a divide unless you're doing like Kirk Cameron movies, you know, that's not really what I'm doing. Um, and, and so it, yeah, it, to have a, a community that's, that's been so passionate about, about both sides of, of their kind of lives and not right. even thinking of it as both sides, but like it's all connected has right. been like really yeah. beautiful and uh and you guys are just incredible artists and I love following your careers and yeah. the work you're doing so oh, yeah thanks. yeah yeah cool we Jonathan's been so so such a special friend such a cool friend um since we met him because there's being able to watch somebody who you've known um for quite some time when they weren't really just starting out and things weren't really working and then all of a sudden now he's a writer and a producer and is getting his masters and it's been yeah. so cool and your um counsel has been so vital in what we do with seated and how Rachel yeah. and I both work in our individual careers and our co-collaboration careers mm-hmm. and so yeah not only as uh <laughs> Jonathan is like one of those people where <laughs> Like you'll have, you'll be having a conversation with somebody and, and they're like, who could we ask about this? And somebody goes, maybe Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we're like, Jonathan, we like get on yeah. the phone. We're like, please help hey, us. Yeah. No question. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, we just appreciate you and yeah. love you very much. Wow. Um, so let's, let's jump, jump into in. these yeah. questions. Um, question one, uh, what do you, what, what got you into the arts? Like how did this all start for you? Oh, uh, I, I don't know how I fell into theater. It just kind of found me. Uh, it was like, I was like two or three and I was just <laughs> like in tra- Well, I was like, I think it was like movies was probably my like way, you know, I was just like obsessed with like movies and TV when I was like a little kid. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just like going to Hollywood video every weekend was like the event of the week. Yes, yeah. Without uh, a doubt. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was that I remember, yeah, my, my, uh, 
grandma would take me to this. Uh, it's uh, I was growing up in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, and um, there was this theater there that's still there now. It's um, Imagination Stage. It's a children's theater there. It's, okay, cool. It's pretty big. It, it, back in the day, um, it was this like small, like like a kid you know. It was a storefront in a shopping mall. Like it was like the Gap, and then Imagination <laughs> Stage is like right next. Oh to It was gosh. the weirdest thing. I didn't question it as a kid. I was yeah, like, oh, you yeah. go to the mall. You know, you go to the food court and you go see a show. It's like very strange. But yeah, they had like a children's theater there and I would go to see every show and I had like my little journal and would like write my notes and my little checklist of like, I've seen all the shows. And then you buy the, you buy the, the, the cast photo and they all meet in the, in the the middle of the mall and you go and get your autographs. And And that was just like magical to me. Um, I, uh, you guys watch Zoom. Do you remember Zoom? Oh, yes. On, and Zoom, they would do... Zoom, Zoom, uh, Zoom. Oh, do I? Did I watch Zoom? Chokehold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they, I don't know if you remember, they used to have these episodes where um, it was like every other episode and it always pissed me off because I had to like wait till the end to find out what they're going to do. But they would, at the end of the episode, they would either do a skit or they would do a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the episodes they did a game, I was like, what a waste. <laughs> Why, did we, Why did I watch this? But, but the ones that did a skit, it was like, Oh my gosh, this yes, is yes, it. yes. Yeah. And I, I swear I like found the scripts on like the internet back when the internet was like barely a thing, you know, and would like wow. write them all in my journal and then I'd get my friends to like act them out. Like it was like again, I just don't I don't know where this came from. Like <laughs> my parents did not raise me in theater. Like right. no yeah. one in my family my you know, grandma took me to theater, but it wasn't like she was like you know a huge, uh, like- Yeah, like I don't think she went to theater on her own. It was just like something you take kids to. So I don't know. It was just like woven into me from the beginning. It's just like storytelling and playwriting. I was like writing my own little books and stuff as a kid. Um, ironically, I was writing parody almost my entire life. And I didn't even realize it until wow. Stranger Things. I mean, wow. I, I grew up loving Saturday Night Live. I grew up yeah. loving Mel Brooks and Monty Python. I mean, like in junior high, we'd be doing these like history presentations. You know, you have to like give something on... I don't know, like, I don't even remember what they were, but it was, I always found a way to like, <laughs> instead of doing a presentation, I would do a skit and it was always like Monty Python themed, oh, you know, yes, so I'd be yes. like acting out whatever little sketch from Tis Monty Python was wound. like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like me throwing references and that did not fit at all into what we were doing. Like, it did, yeah, anyway, so there was a lot of those little things. And then, uh, yeah, so Rachel Lind and I would do... Um, do uh, 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 friend of the podcast? Yes, um, yes, yes. <laughs> Rachel Lent, Yes, <laughs> she's already been here. Um, uh, <laughs> she and I did uh, grew up doing um, community theater in uh, Seattle, Washington area, and so we did uh, a couple of times when we did shows together. We'd be working on these little parodies of whatever show we were in. So our first one we did was Little Women. We did Little Women together, and I played a troll, so I had nothing to do backstage. <laughs> Come on, yes, troll. there's a troll. Yeah, and in Little Women. Yes, there is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> For, it was, it was yeah, not what the a most time. exciting experience but um <laughs> but we wrote this parody because i had nothing else to do backstage and uh and it was just so fun it was like getting to like satirize something that people already like taking something that people know and then like subverting it it yeah. was just like the most fun thing to do for me and so i but yeah i was like writing these like parodies and satires like my entire life and then when i was writing stranger things i was like oh yeah it was my first parody and, no no it's, I, what i've done this before <laughs> but it was so funny like it was like it was like you know, my bread and butter was just like sad. I mean, I didn't even plan to write this musical until I just had so many ideas because I was so right. obsessed with Stranger Things that I was like, wait, I I should write this. Right. Like, yeah. I, I have way too many ideas for this and no one else is going to do it. So I might as well do it. So it's, right. it's it, yeah, it's very funny to me. But, you know, I grew up as an actor, kind of thought I was going to perform and then kind of in college was like I, I don't really want to audition anymore like I'm kind of I want something a little more steady yeah. totally. I love the industry I love you know kind of like understanding the the business side of Broadway and like you know what works what doesn't work in marketing and right. you know the yeah it was just like all of that stuff I was like okay I want to get my hands into that stuff and then yeah, the writing totally. thing was always like a hobby that now has become this kind of doing producing and writing at the same time now right. and is really like where I feel like I'm like finding my place in the industry yeah. and in my art and my craft now so yeah I, I love that you have such a passion for things like Mel Brooks and Monty Python and Rachel's is a huge Spamalot fan I am. Um, that was my first musical or my oh, first Broadway show yes which I didn't even too. really connect wow yeah it was, I saw it in Seattle and it, on tour and it was just like oh my gosh it this is so oh, funny it was the only thing I could talk about for like a month so yeah I quote the, yeah, he says he's not dead, like, all the time. 
I'll like <laughs> I'll do like the fish slapping dance song. People oh. are like, "What is that from?" I'm like, "Are you kidding? Revive Come on, Spam you guys! Spam 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 Spam. Oh, please revive Spamalot. Bring her back. Bring Hannah Waddingham over. Oh. Let her do it. Wow. Um, oh my gosh. Please. Um, Got a deep bench for uh, Lady at the Lake. Here, oh yeah, so. deep deep bench. Um, but I just love that you have such a passion for those pieces of art because I think that people can those from what I perceive, I think people can easily dismiss those as like just silly or goofy or kitschy and not like actual pieces of art. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I love that you have a passion for those and want to see them more of them and want to see people because yeah. they, they bring joy to people. We yeah. just had a conversation not too long ago when we were talking about how like the joy that art can bring, yeah. you know? And so I, I just love that you have such a passion for those. Well, and, and my, my like personal um, uh, soapbox is that I, th there's so, so like, there's such a like, like these, these adaptations of movies to become musicals, like everyone just wants to like dump on those and say like, oh, it's ruining Broadway, whatever. I, if you can do it right, yeah, you can really write something incredible. And I, I mean, most of what's written, especially in the musical realm, in, in our, history of musical theater is an adaptation of something sure yeah. and yes there are like plenty of musicals that have been made out of movies that didn't need to exist and we're definitely a cash <laughs> sure. grab but like sure. there's some that like it sounds like a cash grab and then it's being amazing you know yeah. i mean i think like the spongebob musical was like the biggest surprise of my life it was so clever and strange totally. and goofy i mean uh, legally blonde is like one of the best right? better than the movie i think you know totally. yeah Sh i mean shrek went like harder than it need to you know it's <laughs> yeah, just like right. I, so to me i'm like like you know, you can really rise at it and that's fine. But like, to me, like, I think, um, at a, like a strong adaptation of something when you know how to translate a, a movie storytelling into musical theater storytelling, cause you mm -hmm. have, it is a translation. Very like much so, yeah. there are shows that try to just put the movie on stage and it doesn't work cause you right. don't tell stories the same way. Um, I, when that, when that works well, like, Oh, it's yeah. just like, it, yeah. I mean, and then just musical comedy is just such a hard form so to get hard. right. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think that's why like Book of Mormon is kind of like the standout, uh, like, <laughs> totally. like uh, exception from the last, you know, decade because it's just so well constructed yes. and it's so it, like, it just, it, 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 it presents ideas and then it subverts them and it's yeah. surprising. And it, like, I just think it's so hard to pull it off these days. Yeah. And I think people want that. Like mm -hmm. I, I people, people want stuff that's, that's fun and joyful and it does, it is meaningful. You know, yes. I think it's, it doesn't have to be like dismissed as like, like, you know, right. Kind of uh, fluffy and unnecessary, you know, yeah. like it, there, there is a place for, for musical comedy and, and not yeah. to say that's like my whole brand. I mean, I, no, I no, just, no. I just think like, and with stranger things, I was like, I'm not here to just like cash in on stranger things. I'm like right. here to write a musical comedy that, works as a musical comedy also yeah. is a parody of stranger things and also like doesn't just like throw a couple like you know oh here's a bit and let me do it at, s make right. them sing it you know it's right. like I, like each song i wrote was like what is the idea of the song what are we communicating in the story mm. what is the joke of this song because it's a parody and you want him to be funny yeah. and and then it was like how do these ideas develop through the song so it's not just like joke at the beginning and then the entire song is that same joke like right. it's you know so it's yeah. it was important to me that you know, it, it, this, this isn't just like, you know, funny bit that we're going to do as a, you know, yeah. uh, minute long song and then next sketch, you Toy. know, it, this yeah. is right. not, it's a musical. And, yeah. and so I just, I yeah. respect the, I respect the <laughs> totally. work of musical comedy yes. writers because yes. it's so hard. You yeah. kind of blew my mind with that comment about how like musical theater history, like m so many of those are adaptations of other, like, I mean, yeah. all of my favorites, like Hello Dolly, My Fair Lady. Kiss Me Kate. Those are all yeah. like they're, and I know this, <laughs> yeah. but know just this. like connecting yeah. the pieces of like, that's, you know, current, current day that would be yeah. movies and I well, guess books. Like, even look at the last like decade of best musical winners. It's like mm -hmm. Fun Home's based on a graphic novel. Hades Town's yeah. based on the myth, you know? Right. Um, right. uh, uh, I'm forgetting everything now. <laughs> right, I know. But, you know, Kinky Boots Kinky was Boots, based on yeah. a movie. Yeah, um, I mean, Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton, yeah. Hamilton, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like they're at a, I mean, Band's Visit is based on a movie, except yeah. that no one's seen that movie. Yeah. You know, so it's <laughs> yeah. like. Waitress. Like, wait, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's really just like, I mean, uh, like all credit to people who can write original musicals. Like I, no, I love right. a good original musical, no, yeah. but even like Kimberly Akimbo that everyone's like, it's so fresh and original. I'm like, it's based on a play guys. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> right, it's right. still like not yeah. an original idea. And I love Kimberly Akimbo, you right, know, but it's, right. it's, it's just funny to me. It's like, yeah, yeah. if you can do it right, like I, I think yeah. it's, 
it's something fresh and new and not just like stealing an idea. You know? yeah. Totally. Austin Kleon has this book. I don't know if you were reading my mind. Am, I was yeah. about to say the exact yeah, same thing. It's called steal like an artist. And it's like, it looks like a coffee table book and it, it basically is. Um, but it's like, it's so full of so many great pieces of advice, but it's basically the whole thing is like, nothing is necessarily original because yeah. everybody's just taking like inspiration from different places yeah. and that just merely it's like that whole what's this the Sondheim lyric of uh let it come from you and then it will be or, or something new yeah, what am I saying? yeah yeah it's yeah. from move on um from uh Sunday in the Park with George yeah and he it's um oh my goodness now you're making me blank no I know it, it's like when people say what's your favorite movie and you yeah go, and you're movie? like what's a film um but it just basically is talking about how in move on in the song, George is at a point in his life where he is um, just tired of what he feels like is making not good art and making things that are um, just overly criticized and mundane. And he is trying to find inspiration again. And Dot comes to him and um, says, basically, if you want to make something new, let it come from you and then it will be new yeah um so because everybody's viewpoint is different on art that's one of the cool things about making art is that um every audience member can go see stranger things or go see Hades Town or go see whatever and are going to have a totally different experience um which I love that I yeah. love that so much yeah Okay, we have to move on with our questions. I know. Move on. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. a reference. <laughs> I know, exactly. Um, okay, so Jonathan, why do you think the arts are important? Oh gosh, that's so existential. I know exactly. Um, I mean, <laughs> I uh, so many reasons. I think you know the arts are are um, are are a, a way to connect. Well, I, I, mean, I think at the end of the day, it's a way to connect to our humanity in a way that so many other things in the way that we live just mm. aren't. Um, one of my favorite things was uh, a favorite quotes is, and I'm going to like not even give you the quote cause I can't remember it exactly, but I think it's Winston Churchill during world war two. Um, okay. somebody look this up cause I'm going to be completely wrong about this, but <laughs> I you, no, I, I mean, no, 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 it's good. It's good. But, um, he said something about, uh, there was like talk about like defunding the arts. Um, uh, it, you know, with, with all of the, the, the war, uh, expenses and everything yeah. and he said something like if we do that something like if we if we remove the arts like what are we living for what are we fighting yeah. for you know and it's yeah. it's like the arts are are um are the heart of our culture you know it's the heart yeah. of it, it describes who we are as americans it describes yeah. who we are as people it, it it connects with us and i you know i i um am a christian and have grown up christian and yeah. and you know i go to church every week and you right. know encounter god in that way but but you know for so many people that don't go to church like theater is is church in a sense like people yeah. spend money to sit in a room and experience something that's going to tap into something deeper for them mm -hmm. um which is why i think there's such a profound like spiritual um uh, 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 responsibility of, of theater, you know, totally. that, that it's, it's, totally. it's your pe people are coming in open and wanting to experience something mm -hmm. like no one's spending a hundred dollars to be like, yeah, I don't want this thing to <laughs> yeah. do, you know, yeah. Yeah. make me feel different or think, you know, like it's, it's a, it's like a forum for like safe exploration of ideas. I mean, yeah. I've seen shows about concepts that I could never have a discussion about, but to see characters like real people talking about these things is, yeah. is like, it, it, it just, I don't know. It, it, it's how, I mean, we, we change, I mean, we, our culture is like so much about like talking points and like political issues, right. but when you put people behind them, yeah, right. it, it changes the way you look at things because this, at the end of the day, we're all like humans all trying humans. to like grapple with things. So mm -hmm. anyway, it was bigger than I probably wanted to go with that, but I, I just good. think the arts are just like profoundly important for, yeah. for, for helping us as a society process things, helping us as a society you know, uh, connect with ourselves, connect with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're immensely therapeutic depending on, you know, right. yeah. where you're coming in from and what the show is. Um, I think creating things that produce joy is, is profoundly important too. Totally. I think, you know, we, yeah. we tend to kind of, again, push that off to the side as like a trifle or whatever, but sure. I, I just think it's so, it's so crucial. Totally. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, I could go on all day about that, but yeah. yeah. I think this is a good segue, like with all of that in mind, our third question is what keeps you grounded as a human? Yeah. In, in art, but also in life. I, th yeah. I mean, I could go different ways with that. 
question. I, I think for me, it's I, I I can get very like lost in in just like theater and the arts and mm, totally. like this whole world and kind of lose sight of like the bigger like um, community that I'm in or communities that I'm a part of, mm-hmm. um, you know, my city and my neighbors and all these, you know, my family. And, yeah. and so I don't know, I just think having the, the ability to step away and connect with people outside of theater has been really like important for me. Yeah. I also, uh, conversely, like what keeps me grounded too is like seeing a lot of theater and like seeing a lot of movies and just things that inspire me. I think yeah. it's, it can feel like, especially cause I work a lot in like the producing side and the business side mm-hmm. that I like forget why I do what I do, sure. which yeah, is like to 100%. create the stories, you know? And so it's like, even with Stranger Things, there'll be weeks where I don't see the show because I'm, you know, working on other projects or, and, you know, I'm having all these meetings about budgets and marketing spending right, and all that yeah. stuff. And then I go see the show and I see how people are laughing and I'm just like, oh, this is yeah. why I do this, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it, 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 yeah, I, I try to see as much theater as I can yeah. in the city and, uh, you know, my bank account can <laughs> suffer for we'll, we'll it. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. Um, but I mean, it really is just like it. Like I just get so inspired seeing like different ways that people are looking at storytelling and, mm, and yeah. you know, and like watching movies and just seeing what people are like trying and idea. It just like expands my mind. It's, I feel like every time I see a show, it goes in like a catalog in my brain of like artistic ideas that I can like use as inspiration for my own stuff. And so it's okay. just it's. Yeah. So I love that. Oh, I love that so much. It is kind of as a um, creative, I think it is important to be able to like pull from that file cabinet, you know, and be able to be like, especially if you're creating your own stuff. Yeah. Um, I've heard so many different people when they're t- pitching a show or when they're communicating something, they're like, it's like this, but like a little bit of this with like a little yeah. bit of this, you know? And I think that that is, um, it's so important to continue to be inspired. We talked about with Rachel Lind, you know, not losing sight of the awe Mm. um, and keeping the awe for what we get to do, what we have the privilege of being able to do because, you know, like we get to, um, we get to go and be artists, which is not a lot of people get to do that. So it's a blessing and an honor that we get to do what we get to do. Um, Okay. So next question. Um, What person, place or experience has shaped you the most creatively? Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, Sorry, these are hard questions. Well, yeah, it's hard cuz it's like it depends on what I, what we're talking about too, you know? Totally. I mean, like if I'm talking about stranger things, it's like everything comedy has inspired me in that way. Sure. Um this play I wrote, The Nations, uh, which is sort of based on my yeah. experiences doing um, this program called The World Race, which was this 11-month missions trip where we went to a different country every month and did different work. I mean, um, there's so much in that one that I, I pulled from my own experiences, but, but, you know, uh, uh, Lucas Nath, the playwright wrote this play mm. called the Christians, which was sort Good of formative for play. me. Yeah. Excellent play. Love Excellent him. play. He's my like favorite playwright. He's yeah. everything he's written is incredible. But, um, but what I loved with him is that that play was, was, you know, kind of going back to what I'm talking about, about like presenting ideas that are hard to talk about conceptually yeah. until you have people behind them. Right. And that was one where it, it was, it was talking about, it was allowing like people of faith to like actually debate issues that ordinarily would not be like something that yeah. like anyone outside of the church would want to discuss. Yeah. And, and so when I was wanting, you know, I was finishing this mission strip and I was coming out and I had all these things I was wrestling with and I was just like, you know, what, what did I do actual good from this? Did I actually mm. like, was this all selfish? Was this all, you know, um, just me trying to like feel something like, is sure. this like this kind of American culture that's trying to push me towards this like spiritual experience that like only privileged people have the opportunity to do because mm. it's, you know, traveling the world for a year and getting to do this. Sure. And, and, you know, and, and having a play like what Lucas wrote and, and other playwrights as well, where you're able to kind of just like process those things theatrically in a way that's actually like engaging was like really freeing for me. So yeah. there's, again, coming back to just like seeing and reading as much as you can, that's, that's like really what helps me like tap into like the stories I want to tell and how do I do them and what do I have as kind of my like, like touch points of like, okay, this is, this worked in this way. Like that can help me kind of think about my story in this direction or, you know, so, yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I like, I'm so inspired, but just like people who are doing the thing and like yeah. creating art and telling yeah. stories and, and taking risks and, uh, and learning from that. It's, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, totally. 
I love Lucas. His work is really amazing. Yeah. I got to see A Doll's House Part 2. Oh, so good. Oh, my gosh. I left the theater being like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was like, I, I have so many things to think about. <laughs> like, his, yeah. his writing style is so unique and so cool. And then I read The Christians, and then I... Rachel and I got to go see a production of the Christians mm-hmm. in a church, which was really oh, kind cool. of crazy and a little bit meta. And, you know, and it was really cool. Yeah. It was amazing. We, yeah. we it was like, it was done by this church. It yeah. It was put on by the, by the church. Yeah. And we awesome. had, we had wow. a great, lots of really great discussion. And, um, so highly recommend yeah. Lucas, uh, yeah. his work. If any of you, uh, li- listeners would like some plays to read. Yeah. Um, exactly. yeah. <laughs> um but Rach, you want to give the last, the last yeah. cue? Yeah. Okay. So this, I mean, kind of goes along with the last question, but what book, play, or film do you think every person should read or watch? Yeah. I, I would say Lucas Nath is, yeah. is like my, my like kind of holy trifecta of playwrights for me is Lucas Nath, uh, Brandon Jacobs Jenkins, who yes. wrote, um, yes. uh, an Octoroon, Gloria, uh, appropriate bunch of shows. Yeah. Um, Annie Baker is another one of mine who I love. She's yeah. just this like really interesting, um, just writes people in a way that I've never seen before and just yeah, like gives cool. them space to just exist without like feeling the pressures of like, tell a story. Where are we going? What does this mean? Like it just kind of lets people exist. Like the oh, flick, cool. the, flick the flick is her yeah. like her, her kind of the play everyone knows. And it's a three hour play about people working in a movie theater. And it's like, magical like it's right. just I and mean, it's just scenes of them like sweeping like there's like a whole sequence of just like three minutes of someone just sweeping popcorn and it like sets the stage for like you're watching the people in this like the mon- mundanities right mundane, yeah. of 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 life but you're feeling there's so, there's something so much like deeper going on and and yeah. and just like them wrestling with things and not knowing how to communicate it and i just have been so inspired by that so anything that those three have written i th- so many other playwrights uh, I just actually, uh, for a class, was rereading Fairview, the play by uh, Jackie Sibley's Drury. She's one of my favorite okay, yeah. as well. She's she's very, um, she loves kind of playing with like, uh, you know, meta theatrical storytelling yeah. and, and um, really kind of like diving into a lot of these issues or conversations around race in a way yeah. that's very... Mm-hmm. Um, very yeah subversive and different from how I've seen a lot of these things discussed. So Fairview is one that just absolutely blew me away. Um, wow, cool. uh, when I saw it off Broadway a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, so those are like playwrights, uh, yeah. you know, movies, Parasite's one of my all time favorites. It's oh, like one of the most so brilliantly so constructed movies of all time. Like yeah. every sequence you're just like, this is genius. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, waiting for Guffman is one of my okay. favorite movies Rachel too. Said that. Uh, yeah, I thought she would. I thought she would. <laughs> yeah. It's just, again, just anything Christopher Guest is like a huge inspiration comedically for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, um, books, I, one of my favorite, and this is sort of on my, like the producing side of things, but a uh, creativity Inc. It's the yes. book about how Pixar runs their, yeah. their company oh, is just like read that. a brilliant book for like anyone in any industry. Cause it's mm-hmm. just, it's such a great like business management book. Cause it really talks totally. about like thinking creatively in terms of like how you activate people and mm-hmm. how you engage like teams and like thinking outside the box of just like not just building a formula for how you do things, but like yeah. every time trying to reinvent yourself. Cause Pixar is like such a clear example of right. like people who know what they're doing and how to do it right. And right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's just like a lot of like little tangible things in that book that I'm like, that is genius. And I wish everyone could like think about that, you know? Yeah. Like, anyway, so lots of good stuff. Wow. So many good things. Oh, so many good things, man. I want to go read a bunch of plays now. I know. I got a like, list for you. So. I know. I was going to say, <laughs> I feel like Brandon always so. has the best like bring recommendations of like what you should read and like things to go see. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always look at your like year end review of like favorite things you saw <laughs> over the year. And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, it's good stuff. Totally. Yeah. Okay. So before uh, we finish up here, I just want to give you an opportunity of like, obviously we talked about Stranger Things, but is there anything else that you're currently working on that you want to share with the listeners? Yeah, uh, let me think. I mean, the nations is one I'm still kind of working through. Yeah. There's, you know, I've done some rewrites and and um, readings of it, so hoping to get that produced. And and that that one's a fun one because it's just completely different from my like parody world because everything say, else like, is opposite. very like yeah yeah. I'm like you know I I just like so naturally like fall into uh, musical comedy because it just feels like I know that world so well. But I also yeah. when I go into like straight dramas it I, leans a lot heavier into like naturalistic totally like drama you yeah, know yeah, um yeah, yeah. so and i have a lot of shows i want to write in that vein but it's you know it, 
that that's kind of the only one I have written right now. But um, uh, I have a, a yeah, I have a Camp Nightmare is this Friday the Thirteenth parody musical that I wrote. It's an eighties jukebox, so it's all these that's like eighties so rock and pop yeah. songs, and it's it's really goofy. It's basically um, you know the the plot of Friday the Thirteenth is 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 a bunch of teenagers going to the woods get murdered, right? And so I was like, okay, what is my angle on this? Because um, it was this commission that was uh, that was handed to me, and I was like, okay, I don't really know Friday the Thirteenth. How do I write this from my perspective? And so my angle was, okay, let's place this at a theater camp mm-hmm. and like take that formula oh with Friday God. the Thirteenth. Oh my God. So the whole you know the whole premise is basically it's these theater kids that are putting on this musical at the camp, and it's yeah. an eighties jukebox. They have to do an eighties jukebox musical because you know, the, the state of New Jersey won't give them funding unless they do this to try to bring oh teenagers into normal <laughs> society. Amazing. So, um, awesome. you know, so goofy stuff, but basically they're doing this musical and there's kind of the main girl who like wants to be the star and she never gets to be the star. It's like the hot blonde girl always gets it, you know, right. but throughout the show, of course, everyone's getting murdered. And right. the question is not, you know, what do we do? It's, everyone's dying, but who's going to play that role now that they're dead. And then by the end, it's, you know, the, the one girl gets her like shining moment moment because literally everyone's been murdered. So it's, it's, it's fun. It's goofy. So So that one I've got a draft of that we're developing and trying to shop around a little bit. Um, yeah, I've just started writing this new musical. That's, uh, not really a parody, but sort of a satire of Oscar season. So it's this kind of, uh, it's, um, dark comedy as well. It's basically this, this, uh, actress in her mid forties who realizes her career is about to, um, basically about to die because she's entering into her mid forties. And that's kind of always like the, yeah, right. yeah. you know, if <laughs> you're an actress zone, yeah. yeah, yeah, in Hollywood. And so basically she gets her first golden globe nomination and it's like, Oh my gosh, maybe I'm on track to win an Oscar. And her agent's like, you know, if you win this, if you don't win this, like your career's over, we're going to have to put you in like, you know, infomercials and faith-based films, you know? Right. And so, <laughs> Oh and gosh. so she so she goes to the Golden Globes. Uh, she loses to this other actress. That's kind of like her arch nemesis. And in this kind of moment of devastation for her, she um, accidentally uh, drops a bunch of Xanax into this girl's drink, and the girl <laughs> drinks it and oh. dies at the at the Golden Globes. And so it's this whole thing of like, oh my gosh! But everyone oh thinks it was gosh. everyone thinks she like OD'd. So they're like, they don't right. put it back at her. Well, then the Oscar nominations come out and, it, you know, Golden Globes is kind of like the beginning of the Oscar right. season. And so the Oscar nominations come out. The main actress gets nominated, but so does the one that died. And the whole conversation <laughs> is, oh, well, she died. So obviously she's, she's going to win. And so the main actress realizes I need to change the narrative if I'm going to, you know, get this, to, to get this yeah. Oscar. And so she realizes her and her husband are like, we need to kill the rest of the people in the in the category in order to like get the conversation back on us. So basically it becomes a sort of gentleman's guide, right. like killing off all the other oh, actresses. And it's, and it's fun because it kind of each actress represents like a different kind of type of yeah. performance that like gets nominated every year. And so I just, I know Oscar season so well that right. I was like, I can like, I'm just like such a movie buff that I know yeah. like all the stages and like the weird, like narrative quirky stuff that, that anyway, so that's, that's, that's in the works. so fun. Tenet, wow. I'm excited for uh, that one. Me yeah. too. Title is a uh, red carpet at this point, but <laughs> God. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> title, title pending, but yeah, you know, that's we're, so we're, we're awesome. testing it out. That's so. awesome. Oh, I love so. that. Oh my gosh. Okay. And where can people find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at JT Hogue two or Instagram at JT Hogue two. Uh, you can also follow stranger sings yeah. on Twitter at stranger sings or on Instagram and TikTok at stranger sings musical. Awesome. Oh, okay. Sweet. Everybody go gotta, do it. You gotta go get some follows there. <laughs> go do yeah. it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. This has just been awesome. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. guys I just feel like I'm like, there's so many stories now that I'm like, I can't wait. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wait for this and exactly. I want to go read these. Yeah. yeah. We we love you. We, we're very thankful for you as a co-collaborator, as a friend. And um, yeah, we're just thankful that you came and talked with us for a little bit. So yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. This is fun. Yeah, it was a blast. (laughs) Let's do it again. You know what I mean? For real. Okay, you guys. See you next time. Thanks for listening to the For the Makers podcast. There are a few ways you can engage with us. Join our team of dreamers on Patreon for exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. To get updates and find out more about Seated Productions, you can find us on Instagram at seated.productions or visit our website at www.seatedproductions.com. Until next time. 
Listen well and tell stories.